Hey my YouTube friends, welcome back. Today we have a laptop with the most powerful CPU and most powerful iGPU out there in the market. That is the ZBook Ultra G1A from HP. The highlight of this laptop is really the chip. It has Ryzen AI Max 395 Pro, 16 core CPU, and 40 computing unit integrated graphic. It has up to 128 gigabytes of quad channel 8,000 megahertz unified memory LPG DDR5. And there are really not so many products out there with this chip, this AI, Ryzen AI Max chip. And in my opinion, the ZBook Ultra G1A from HP is the most well-rounded one out there in the market right now with a 14 inch form factor, a little more than 1.5 kilograms, close to 1.6 kilograms, very close in terms of weight compared to those MacBook Pros with Mac chips. And the device I have today has the highest CPU configuration. It's the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 Pro and 64 gigabytes of unified memory. I wish this can be at 128 gigabytes, but we got a 64 gigabytes version today. And it has a 14 inch 2.8K OLED display. To decide if a laptop is suitable for someone really depends on the persona of this person. So today my persona is I'm a software engineer. I do a lot of coding on this device. I also do a lot of conference calls using Teams. So camera and audio quality is a big factor to me. And every day I travel between my home office to my office office. So portability is important to me, but I drive most of the time. So it's not like I need a super portable devices to be with me all the time. And every year I have like one one month out of town time, I need a powerful device to be with me and potentially a portable external monitor is very essential to me. I don't do a lot of local AI coding, meaning in this persona, I don't need to like load the AI models locally into the unified memory, but that's a big win. That's a like a one of the strongest strengths for this chip. So there will be a dedicated video for this AI perspective, local let alone model running on this laptop, but that will be a separate video. Okay, in terms of design and build quality, this is a very clean looking 14 inch laptop. It has the magnesium alloy chassis, very sturdy. I like the color choice. It's the space gray, if Apple named this color. And it has this two tone keyboard, but maybe people will think this is just the too close to the design language from MacBook. Interestingly, I think 2025, more and more laptop choose this like color scheme, the space gray, metallic grayish color on the chassis of the laptop uh, and a like slightly lighter gray for the keyboard. I know a lot of like Lenovo's uh, laptops this year have chosen this color, color scheme. Very similar color choice, uh, like this Yuga Pro, like this Yuga Pro 9i 2025. It has this very similar like a body color and the keyboard keycaps color is a light gray, similar color choice. I like this color choice. Interestingly, we see the same choice from many manufacturers. If you know my channel, you know I reviewed the HP EliteBook XG1A. That was also a beast. Uh, but that one, uh, it's also very sturdy, but there is a few things I don't like about the build quality. I mentioned there is a, like a slight, slight gap between the, the screen lid and the body. But for this one, even though they use the exact same chassis, there is no gap between the display and the keyboard deck section. But this one just feels a step above that. If you look at the screen, it has very thin bezels all around on the four edges. I would say this one has a really good screen to body ratio. It's 16 by 10, of course, with the 2880 by 18,000 screen resolution. I wish the screen can be even taller, something like the Surface Laptop 3x2, but it's fine. I know, I understand this is like a mainstream resolution at this moment. Not a lot of uh, laptops have even taller aspect ratio. Many of MacBook users may not even notice. Actually, MacBook Pro has a higher uh, screen ratio than 16.10. It actually is 16 by 10.5, closer to the 3.2 ratio I would prefer for mobile use. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this, the weight of this laptop is very close to the MacBook Pro. It weighs close to 1600 grams, and it has a thickness of 18 millimeter, 18.9 millimeters to be exact. Again, exactly the same chassis in terms of the size, uh, slightly heavier than EliteBook XG1A. I think the latest generation of Windows laptops really step up their game. One or two generations ago, even the Core Ultra, the first generation of the Core Ultra, I can constantly hearing the fan cranking in when like you're working with your laptop. Even it's under very light workload or even no workload. You still hear the fan spinning and there's this drastic difference between Windows laptops and MacBook in terms of fan noise because 
after like Apple using the M series chips, their laptop is just infinitely better. I have a like a 13th gen Intel CPU Asus laptop and the fan noise is just so annoying. Uh, not just the when I was playing games, even like day-to-day -day use, the fan noise is just too annoying. But this generation, the Core Ultra 2 and the recent like Ryzen AI chips, there is this massive improvement that under light workload, these laptops are just really cool and really quiet. And this laptop runs surprisingly quiet under light workload. I like that a lot. But because this is a more powerful chip, the chassis is actually running hotter than the Intel Lunar Lake and even the Ryzen AI 9 370, the EliteBook XG1A, again, I was testing. The palm rest can be getting warmer if you start to doing something. And I would say it's the heat becomes even unbearable if you're like charging your, your laptop while working. If you don't need this much of uh, iGPU performance, the Ryzen AI 9 360 is a good balance between the thermal performance and the performance. To cool this chip, this super powerful chip in a relatively uh, thin chassis, HP has to use a vapor chamber in terms of the cooling solution. This is different from the EliteBook XG1A. To get a better thermal performance and cooling for the super powerful AI, Ryzen AI Max Plus chip, it has to use the best thermal solution to do this. Okay, for the display, it is a pretty standard 14 inch 2.8K OLED display. It is touch, a touch display. But what I don't like about this display is that to, it uses the Samsung's like touch screen solution that you can see some grades uh, in the screen if you look closer, it's especially when you're looking at light content. There are different technologies out there to support touch screen, but without the grade, that would be a much suitable choice for this expensive laptop. And as you can see, the screen does not have anti-reflective coating. It is pretty reflective when the screen is turned off. In terms of brightness, this laptop is fine. It has the 400 nits brightness. You can work with the screen indoor, no problem, and outdoor, most of the time, no problem. If there's direct sunlight, maybe you think you can use some extra brightness of the screen, but most of the time, I'm totally fine with the brightness. I understand this is a pretty common choice for now, like, 14 inch 2.8K OLED display, but I just prefer the 3 by 2 aspect ratio a lot more when you do a lot of coding and you work on the screen. Okay, CPU performance. I run Geekbench 6 a couple of times and the highest score I can get, the single core score is 2830. And the multi score is 16,000, a little more than 16,000. If you compare that to AMD Ryzen AI 9 360, it has slightly higher single core performance and, and higher um, multi-core performance, but not by much. I guess if there is a more aggressive uh, thermal option or it runs above 100 watts, the multi-core CPU performance can definitely step up by 10 to 20%. But I guess HP has this consideration, just that it's a good balance between the cooling, between the size of the laptop and between the chip. Again, the chassis is limiting the powerful CPU, not really too much higher than Ryzen AI 9 360. When it comes to the GPU performance, this one is no doubt the most powerful iGPU in the market. And there are a lot of tasks, like gaming tasks out there. And according to this task, over the 40, 24 different games, this iGPU on the Ryzen AI Max chip is running about 10% slower than NVIDIA RTX 4060. And of course, one of the biggest strengths of the iGPU and this chip is its unified memory. It has twice as much as memory bandwidth compared to other LPG DDR5 laptops and you can allocate up to 96 gigabytes of GPU memory to do some AI workload. And we'll make a separate video when it comes to AI workloads on this ZBook Ultra G1A. Disk performance is one of the least concerned things when it comes to purchase a laptop nowadays. Most of the laptops have like removable, replaceable SSD. But to remember this one, the ZBook Ultra G1A has a PCIe 4x4 uh, interface. So if you buy those PCIe Gen 5 SSDs, like what I did, you won't be benefited from that because it's the speed is just capped or limited by the PCIe 4x4, which is around seven gigabytes of read and write speed. Next, battery life. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I coded my own battery benchmark. The bytes and bats battery benchmark mimic the four typical scenarios we use this laptop every day, including video streaming, web browsing, office uses, and coding in this instance. We we'll run the four scenarios 30 minutes one by one, and the laptop is not in a vanilla environment. It 
mimics the day-to-day -day use it has. I have installed some of the applications and some of them may running in the back background, like the OneDrive. And so the battery test result, not so good. I guess it's kind of expected because this chip is so powerful and it requires more power. It, it rocks a four hour, 40 minutes battery usage under a Bison Bats battery benchmark. And this is the chart it compares with the other chips and other laptops. Of course, this has no comparison to Lunar Lake. It's supposed to be more power efficient. It's a little disappointing because Ryzen AI 9 370 has a much better battery life and a very close CPU performance. The keyboard on this laptop is surprisingly good because again, EliteBook XG1A seems to have the same keyboard, but this one is more tactic and it, it has lighter touches. It just a little more effortlessly when typing on this keyboard. I would say this keyboard is actually on the same level as uh, Surface laptops. If you prefer the typing, uh, typing feeling of MacBook Pros, this one is not close to that, but closer to the Surface laptops. The touchpad is fine. It's uh, usable, it's not haptic. It's just a very good traditional uh, mechanical touchpad. I wish HP can use the haptic touchpad, touchpad in such like high-end laptops. The speakers are okay. It's very clear in terms of like voice and sound. It has absolutely no problem when you're doing like Teams conference. Sometimes we overlook the speaker quality, but when you are doing a lot of like meetings, the uh, audio quality actually is important for you to clearly hear what people are talking about. It just to give you a little better experience. And for my typical use case, a lot of like Teams calls and the speakers is really important to me. The camera shutter is a little loose. As you can see, there is a little like a privacy camera shutter here. It's a little loose. I guess this is one of the problem for many of HP laptops and Lenovo laptops definitely does a better job here. But again, this one, it's fine. In most of the cases, it won't be a problem to you. I can't say the same for the EliteBook XG1A. That one is even looser. And sometimes it's just unexpectedly close the camera causing me some, some problems. This is from the ZBook Ultra G1A camera and microphone test. Let me know how do you think the video and audio quality. Great port selection for ZBook Ultra G1A. On the left-hand side, it has the HDMI 2.0, I believe, and two USB 4 Type-C port, a headphone jack. And on the right-hand side, it has the laptop lock. It has a USB-A, uh, which is very appreciated, and another USB Type-C, type USB 4. And because it's a high-end business laptop, it has the biometric uh, sensors. It has the fingerprint reader here, and it's a, and this is a Windows Hello in enabled camera here. So conclusion for the HP ZBook Ultra G1A, under my current persona, who is a software engineer, does a lot of coding here and a lot of conference calls, not too much AI local coding, not much gaming requires a certain level of portability. The ZBook Ultra G1A is a really good package. It has the fastest multi-core CPU and iGPU package in any 14-inch laptop, and it has up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. It has a high-quality camera, microphone, it has an okay level of audio quality, but good enough for any uh, conference calls. And the machine is just is so powerful, you won't mind a little extra weight. It weighs a little more than 1.5 kilograms, but this can be very expensive when it's spec'd out. But recently, when it comes to CPU performance, I think Intel Core Ultra 9 to 85, H, which is also used in some of the size laptops. It has a, about the same level of CPU performance. And also 14 inch laptops for some of the gaming laptops, it has a much better dedicated GPU. But again, as a total package, this one is really good. It doesn't have a uh, obvious problem. Maybe you would say the display is one of them, but that's fine by me. And for HP, they have global warranty for the ZBook Ultra, which means if you buy this laptop from other countries, you still get warranty in the US and globally. And I got this ZBook Ultra G1A for around 2,500 US dollars. Let me know if you think this is a good deal. And if you'd like to know more about this laptop, please like this video and consider to subscribe to our channel. More videos are coming.